Private prisons. Privately run companies whose sole revenue source is locking people up. They use campaign contributions and lobbying to make sure we're incarcerating more people than ever so they can make more money than ever. Privately run prisons rake in about $3 billion a year. Yeah, here's the problem. Private prison companies, by definition, need to put people in jail in order to turn a profit. These assholes, sorry mom, make money by charging taxpayers per person per day in prison like a hotel. They're using our corrupt political system to do it, and they're growing. The prison industry grew 1,600 percent between 1990 and 2010. They're turning our tax dollars into their profits with this simple three-step process. Private prison corporations like the Corrections Corporation of America and GEO Group use their lobbyists to help raise money to re-elect popular incumbents in state and federal elections. Democrat, Republican, doesn't matter. They pick candidates who are likely to win and donate enough money to ensure that they get a seat at the negotiating table when it comes time to start writing laws. Next, they hire lobbyists to write laws that make sure their prisons stay full, regardless of what's actually best for public safety. The nonpartisan Justice Policy Institute did some digging to find out exactly what this looks like. The report says, quote, Over the years, these political strategies have allowed private prison companies to promote policies that lead to higher rates of incarceration and thus greater profit margins for their company. Once private prisons have buttered up politicians with campaign contributions and lobbying, they get everything from lucrative state contracts to new, harsher laws that lock up more people for lesser crimes with longer minimum sentences. Nearly every prison deal includes a bed mandate that requires the state to fill 90 to 100 percent of the beds in privately owned detention facilities. It's what we do with the private prisons in Arizona. Uh, essentially, we promise them that whether their beds are empty or full, we will pay for X amount of guys in their prisons. Really? Really think about this for a second. These companies are buying political influence to actually change criminal law. Not because it, you know, makes the public more safe or anything like that, but because their entire profit model depends on it. And this sounds like the stuff of conspiracy theories, but CCA, the biggest private prison company in the country, openly admitted as much in its 2014 annual report, which we're just gonna go ahead and quote directly here. Quote, any changes with respect to drugs and controlled substances or illegal immigration could affect the number of persons arrested, convicted, and sentenced, thereby potentially reducing demand for correctional facilities to house them. So, if you're someone who thinks the war on drugs is a disaster and we should stop throwing nonviolent drug offenders in jail, or if you're sick of a mass incarceration system that targets racial and ethnic minorities and preys on the economically disadvantaged, or if you want to stop locking people up in inhumane facilities that cut costs by slashing security and medical care and lock up children, then too bad, because it means lower profits for private prisons. And if you're someone who likes the idea of letting the private sector handle government services in a more efficient and cost-effective way, bad news. It turns out that private prisons don't act actually save any money at all. A recent review of more than 40 studies found that Ohio, New Mexico, Florida, Georgia, and Arizona, all huge private prison states, failed to see any of the savings that were promised by private prison companies. In fact, the only study we were able to find that showed private prisons saved taxpayers a significant amount of money was funded by, wait for it, private prison companies. So to recap, the private prison industry is growing thanks to a corrupt political system. This will keep happening as long as special interests can use lobbyists and campaign money to buy influence with lawmakers. And as with any political issue, you can find the root cause by following the money. And like us on Facebook to get all the latest updates from anti-corruption land. You can also click right here to learn more about joining the thousands of volunteers who are fighting right now to pass a wave of tough, new anti-corruption laws in cities and states across the country. I am Mansoor. I'm Zip. And we are Represent Us. Thank you so much for watching and have a lovely Ooh. morning, afternoon, or evening. I think that covers all of it, right? Or midnight. Or midnight. <laughs> <laughs>